Dearly beloved, praise the Lord. And our journey continues because we live one day at a time. And God desires that we have to continue in obedience to him. And so we pray, trusting God for his guidance. Father God in heaven, thank you that you give us an opportunity to interact with your word. We pray that you will continue by the power of your Holy Spirit to continue teaching us to live a pleasant life as any one of those men and women that we talk about in the Bible. Be pleased, O oh God, to guide us through in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, pray the Lord and God has been, remains God. From time immemorial, he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And our journey that we started on biblical personalities continues because in our program, Finding God, we look at them, how their lives impact us. And of course, their lives were lived and left as an example for us. The reason why we read about Abraham, we read about Isaac, Jacob, we read about all of those. And in these recent times, we have just, we've been talking about prophet Elijah, the man that lived during a very difficult time, very tumultuous time, very, very, very um, difficult time during his ministry. But we as ministers, we pick lessons from people as such. And so that we continue even when things are not going our own way. Which way do we take? So the man Elijah still remains our yardstick in these few weeks that we've been um, exploring through. And so this is the last episode on Elijah. And there are lots of things that we learn from him because at one time I did mention that he was a man like any one of us. He was a human being like any one of us. But he remained a yardstick even before King Ahab who was so treacherous. Even before his wife Jezebel who was so, I mean, so mad with him. But he remained focused. And so in our generation, during our time, when things go hard, when things go difficult, which way do we take? And so Prophet Elijah leaves us a very, very big lesson. And so this time we say, God's work must continue. God's work continues even when things are so hard. And so Elijah encourages us immensely. His life on earth, his stone on earth, the runnings, the, because he kept running, running here, running there, running, and he was actually trying to continue with the, with the ministry. And even when he was unsafe, he remained focused. And so even our times, friends, that Elijah leaves us a lesson. Number one is that he was a prophet. Now he remained a prophet even when things were not easy. A prophet was the mouthpiece of God. And in our time we need God's mouthpiece when things are not going right, when things are going so bad. He walked on earth. This earth that we're walking on, he talked to people. He rebuked where there was need for rebuking. He encouraged others where it needed encouragement. And so he told them, God is God. The reason why his name is the Lord is my God, Yahweh is my God. Can we also pronounce in this, this generation that the Lord is my God? Even when things are not easy, the Lord is my God. In poverty, the Lord is my God. In hatred, the Lord is my God. In persecution, the Lord is my God. Even during this time when there are so many things of the same sex marriages and things like that, the Lord is my God. And so Elijah drew the people to God. And he said it to them, he kept encouraging them. And one of the things that I want to bring to you is that in chapter 18, verse 20, 21, when there was a contest on Mount Carmel, Elijah remained focused. And when he met 
the over 450 prophets of Baal, and yet the prophets of God had diminished. The number had gone so low. And so Elijah, the Bible does mention something here for us about Elijah. In verse 20, So Ahab summoned all the Israelites and gathered the prophets at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah approached the people and said to them, he approached all of them. He went closer to them and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? Another version of the Bible asked, How long will you waver between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people didn't answer him a word. Now, friends, if there is anything that I would like to encourage you about in the life of Prophet Elijah is this, that we have a lot of waverings, a lot of opinions, not settling on one God, on God who is our Father. But the issue is, shall we not waver? The times are so devastating but here the Bible is saying, if Yahweh is God, then worship him. If God is God, go along, go ahead. Then wavering between two opinions, one day you are in this direction, another day you are in this direction, another day you are ahead, another day you are backward. If Yahweh is God, worship him. This is still a message for us today. And so, friends, Prophet Elijah leaves me with this question. And the question is for us in this generation, in our time. One other thing is that Prophet Elijah was a man who heard God speak. He hearkened the voice of the Lord. He leaned his ear towards God. Now, shall we also lean our ear? towards God, what is God saying in generations like this, in times like this? He leaned his ear towards God. And how I encourage ourselves that we shall lean our ear towards God. There are so many talks. There are so many things that are diverting and deviating us. But we encourage ourselves. Elijah leaves us an example that we need to lean our ear towards God. And of course, remember that we need to lean, but also sharpen. We heard about a still smaller voice and that in the still smaller voice, he needed to sharpen his ear. Now, in the noises that we have, in the noises of poverty, in the noises of homosexuality, in the noises of lesbianism, in the noises of those stupid things, we need to sharpen our ear that God will speak to us and encourage us. We only need to lean your ear towards God. That's one. You also need to sharpen your ear to hear what God is saying in these noises that we're having in our, during our generation. Now, one other thing about Prophet Elijah is that he walked in obedience. Very, very important for us in finding God. In chapter 17, verse 5, the Bible says he did what God commanded him and he left. Because in chapter 17, God told him, go. 17, verse 5, he said, leave, go. And he got up, said, get up and go. He left, so he did what God commanded him. So this is what the Lord, the Lord, of the Lord is saying. When he says, leave, when he says, do this, you do it. Pray the Lord. And so he, did, he lived in obedience. In chapter 17, verse 10, the same thing that Elijah arose and went. The way God spoke is the way he did it. In chapter 18, verse 2, so Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, the way the voice of the Lord told him. In chapter 18, verse 2, he went and presented. So Elijah went to present himself to Elijah. I mean to Ahab. And so this is the point that we're making, that he lived in obedience. Shall we live in obedience, brethren? 
Shall we follow God's word? What is it saying? What is the voice of the Lord saying in this time? So he hearkened the voice of the Lord. He walked in obedience. Samuel had a message to King Ahab, I mean King Saul, and he said obedience is better than sacrifice. Of course, this is in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, and he says that then the Lord, then Samuel said, does the Lord take pleasure in battle offerings and sacrifices as much as in, obe in obeying the Lord? Look, to obey is better than sacrifice. To pay attention is better than the fat of rams. In this generation, just as it was, God desires and requires obedience. So my friends, God, may God help us that we shall live in obedience to his word. What is he saying? What is God saying? Obedience is better than sacrifice. One other thing about prophet Elijah that he lives with me is that he experienced God's provisions. We talked about it so much in our previous talks, in our previous presentations. I repeat it here for purposes of emphasis and that God will continue providing in his extraordinary ways. He used the ravens, the birds of the air to provide for Elijah's meal in chapter 17 verses 1 to 6. He used the, the, it was the, there was an angel also that actually he, the angel came and woke him up, get up and eat, get up and eat. So we pray that God in his extraordinary ways, may he provide for us, may he provide for you. At another point, he used a widow, a very poor woman. And we talked about that at, at one moment. And this in chapter 17, the widow with her little food, remember we talked about it and it left a mark on my life that even in her poverty provided for the man of God. And Elijah was able to be fed. And extraordinarily, the Bible says that he ran with energy far beyond human capability. Chapter 18, verses uh, 41 to 46, he ran and with that power. When the rain came, he ran. Ahab used his chariot, but he ran beyond human capability. And I pray that God will enable you to walk and not faint. Remember, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, that those who trust in the Lord shall mount up with wings like those of the eagles, that they will run and not grow weary, that they will walk and not faint. And this is the message that we're bringing during this difficult time. Isaiah chapter 10, uh, chapter 40, verse 31. That will you walk and not faint, that you will run and not fail, that will you mount up. You only need to get the strength that Elijah, the prophet, beyond human capability. And I'm praying for myself, really, that during this time that I should do things beyond human capability. That actually God's name will be glorified. I pray for you that God will enable you, will, keep, will, will give you the capability that you do great things, great exploits for his name. And Elijah is the prophet that actually, from whom we draw this encouragement that God can feed us. And the reason why in Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first, and all these things will be added unto you. He will give us the strength, he will give us the power, he will give us the energy, and we shall mount up like the eagles. And also, what we learn from Elijah, and he leaves a mark on my life, is that Elijah was a man of prayer. He was always in communion with God, and we read from his word. He was always having time with God. He sets an example for me. He sets an example for you in our own walk of faith. He enables us to know that the Lord is God. And he prayed earnestly. Remember, for three and a half years, the Bible says there was no rain. And how I pray that God gives us the power, God gives us the strength, God gives us the stamina to stand in the power of prayer like Prophet Elijah did. And in James chapter 5, verse 17, he makes a reference to this kind of man, that he was a man of prayer. 
and for three and a half years there was no rain. And when he prayed again, the rain came. And remember when he was on the mountain and with his servant, and it looked like it was impossible. There was no cloud, there was no what, and seven, over seven times sending the servant, go and see, go and look on. And eventually, when he saw a cloud as small as a shumani hand, he told the servant, he told the prophet, I mean, king, I mean the king that ran for your life, the rain is coming. And the rain came after three and a half years. Elijah was a man like any one of us. And how we pray that God will give us the capability to make a prayer. And you need to pray for your life. You need to pray for the you fathers. You need to pray for your children. You children, you need to pray for your parents. And everyone needs to pray for one another. I have to pray for you. And you also have to pray for me. We need to be people of prayer. And um, a few things to finish. And then he, Elijah expected the miracles all the time. He stood as a man who trusted God. I pray for you that you will stand as a man, a woman who trusts God. And I pray for myself and I pray for everyone that we shall stand as people who trust God and anticipate the God fulfilling his promises. Shall we be anticipating God's fulfillment? I just ex remembered the woman in the scripture, um, in the gospel according to Mark, the woman and even the other gospels, the woman who had suffered from hemorrhage 12 years. And the Bible said that actually when she was in a crowd and people were walking and the woman said, if I can only, you know, he, she expected a miracle there. Now I pray for you that actually you also expect a miracle. And indeed, when the woman went and said, if I can only touch, and when she touched, she was healed. I pray for you. I pray for myself. I pray for everyone else that this is self-encouragement. You need to encourage yourself to stand in anticipation that God is going to fulfill something for you. This generation requires men and women who will be anticipating God is working, God is doing. And um, he was a brave man. That's another thing, that he was a brave man of God. He, nothing deterred him. Even when Jezebel threatened to kill him, he remained. He, well, many times he was on the run, but he was focused. Brevity is what we need. And we need to be brave during our generations to talk about evils in society. Evils that are eating us up. And finally, he confronted evil. And we need to confront evil in our society. Jezebel and, his, and her prophets. May we follow the footsteps of Prophet Elijah so that we can confront all these evils in our society. And remember in a small, still small voice that God gave Elijah direction where to go. Friends, may God give us direction where to go guiding us through. May we journey as we trust the Lord. Of course, Isaiah 40 verse 31 is the point that I'm driving at as I wind up that those who trust in the Lord shall mount up with wings like those of the eagles. That these people who trust in the Lord shall run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint at all. Our times are very, very, very tumultuous. They are dangerous. They are hard times, just as it was during Elijah's time. But he remained focused and prayerful and expectant. And I pray that God will give us the expectancy within us that God is going to do something. Just like the woman who suffered from hemorrhage he said, if I can only touch. And may God give you the stamina to remain standing, that in the face of godlessness you remain focused and god who starts this journey we are now moving on and on and on and the reason why we have these personalities is because there are lessons that they teach us in finding god and of course because they were in the arena they kept trusting and believing and walking and you know travailing so we also need to continue in the same service that god who starts finishes and when he finishes he finishes so well and because he finishes so well he gets well pleased and may he be well pleased with me may he be well pleased with you the servant of the lord elijah leaves us lessons and in the hall of fame in um hebrews chapter 11 he's mentioned there and shall we be mentioned somewhere 
that God has done great things through us. May he do great things through you and may he do great things through everyone. And the church will remain triumphant, although it is still militant because we are still fighting, but triumphant when time comes and he welcomes us in glory. Will you be welcome in glory and may we all be welcome in glory and so that actually his name be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>